Highland Middle School, a school that supports spirit, responsibility, and integrity. Today we will be taking a deeper look into some of the different things going on at Highland, such as the 6th grade center, the Success Academy, and positive behavior support. My name is Zach Pruitt and I'm here with Mrs. Maxey, the assistant principal at Highland Middle School, who is also in charge of the 6th grade center, which is kind of like a school within a school for the 6th graders. Um, so what do the sixth graders get that's different from the other students? What is the, tell us what the sixth grade center is. Well, the sixth grade center is separate from um, the rest of the middle school children here at Highland. Uh, one of the biggest fears that parents have in our community is uh, for children to leave elementary school and then enter Highland, which is huge. Um, our elementary schools each have about probably 500 kids in the entire school. And when sixth graders come here, there will be about 500 sixth graders in one school. So Highland is a very, very big school. And therefore, um, one of the things that they get is still the individual attention that they received in the elementary school setting because we are separate from the seventh and eighth grade. How does the sixth grade center kind of help prepare the kids for the next step? Like it's keeping them what they're comfortable with, but how does it prepare them for being in a big environment with other kids? Well, it's um, kind of a gradual release of responsibilities, if you will. At the beginning, um, we have all the sixth grade teachers walk our students to their electives, kind of like they did in elementary school. And then throughout the year, the children are given more privileges and they're able to move about the building a little bit more freely. Um, here it is near the end of the school year and we're still not quite there. We just, we like to wrap our hands around our sixth graders and just um, provide them with that safety that they felt in elementary school. And like I said, we're eventually releasing um, more responsibility to them as the year moves forward. Now, is this the first year for the sixth grade center or has it been going on for a while? Sixth grade has been at Highland for a few years. This is the first year that sixth grade actually has um, a, a principal that's designated for sixth grade, uh, and that would be me. And um, my office, as well as the sixth grade dean and the sixth grade counselor, is located away from the other principals, deans and counselors. Uh, therefore, again, we are like our own school back here. Um, so that's how it's a little bit different that way. So do the sixth graders have, is there a nurse here and their electives or do they have some of their electives here or are they all throughout the school? Um, all their electives are just like seventh and eighth grade. However, the sixth grades transition at different times than the seventh and eighth grade students. Therefore, when bells ring in the building for other grade levels, they do not necessarily ring in the sixth grade end. So, um, but art classes are located in the sixth grade wing, if you will, and the band and music classes are very, very close. Um, they're in very close proximity. The, the kids only have to go down our main hallway. There's no reason for um, sixth graders to be anywhere else in the building. And I guess to uh, finish things up, what is going on that will excite kids and parents to send their kids to Highland for sixth grade? Well, there's something extremely exciting going on, and hopefully you're going to get some uh, pictures of the kids actually doing some great things in a couple of our classrooms. We're piloting a program, a one-to-one -one program right now, which means that sixth graders or the students in these two particular sixth grade classrooms each have their own Chromebook. And next year, all incoming fifth graders, so all are all incoming sixth graders, current fifth graders, will have um, their own Chromebook as well. So that's very exciting. So I, I think that's the one thing that's going to make us different. And only the sixth graders at Highland will have Chromebooks next year. But then as the years roll on, those sixth graders will get to keep their computers as seventh graders. And then the new sixth graders will get computers. So within three years, everyone at Highland will have um, a Chromebook or a device, if you will. All right, well, thank you very much for talking to us and with the information.
My name is James Laswell. I'm in sixth grade. And basically what I got here is a Chromebook and a Chromebook's a laptop from Google that we're testing out. We're the only class in sixth grade that actually gets to test these, except for the one next, next door. And um, they're really cool, actually. Um, you can do a lot of things on it. It's, it's more like a phone than it is a laptop because it has, like, apps and voice command and stuff. And so I was really looking forward to this for a very long time. My name is Landon Allenbaugh, and um, I'm in sixth grade. And uh, what I like about the school is how helpful they are to, like, get you to different classes and stuff. Um, I have a Chromebook right here. Um, we use this for pretty much everything that we, or not everything, but a lot of stuff that we do. Uh, we do a lot of notes on it and just we'll uh, do like different educational videos. Um, I've been kind of looking forward to these for a while because they told us that we were going to get them. My name is Amanda Reed and I'm in sixth grade and what I like about this school is how nice some of the people are and how generous they are to give us these Chromebooks and what a Chromebook is is basically a Google a small Google laptop that you can use for school. My name is Zach and I'm in the sixth grade. Um, I like this school because it's a lot more like free, I guess you could say. And the people aren't are nice and like we got these Chromebooks and they're like computers set up with Google Apps and things like Chrome and stuff like that. Hello, my name is Bree Broaddus and I am here today with Mrs. Landis, one of the teachers in the Success Academy. So can you tell us a little bit about the Success Academy? Um, the Success Academy was developed three years ago by uh, Mrs. Durr and several of the other teachers that were at Anderson High School and Highland Middle School. Um, it was created so that we could give a different environment for those kids who are struggling academically, behaviorally, a way to smaller classes and a way to do some more one-on-one. -on -one. What are some of the things that you guys do that you guys go above and beyond for for your students? Well, one of the things that we do is we have double blocked classes. So for math and English, they get 90 minutes, and then they have additional reading, and then they have science and social studies. And that gives us time to do more one-on-one -on -one and to get them caught up where they are, the academic gap is. Some of the other things that we do is we have a community liaison, Mr. Tony Gothard, and he goes out into the community, picks up kids when they miss the bus, or if they've been kicked off the bus, or, they have, or they're struggling. Um, he also goes and meets with parents, he meets with uh, services, with the counselors and psychiatrists, CPS. Um, we also give out food, clothing if they need it. We have a closet of clothing for uniforms and if the kids are hungry because they missed breakfast or they, didn't, they don't have the funds for breakfast, we feed them. Um, we allow them a little um, more leniency when it comes to some of those areas because the children that we are dealing with um, already struggle in school. Um, upon the struggles that they have outside of school. Okay, that's awesome that you guys actually do that. A lot of people in the community probably didn't know that. So what is your favorite part about the Success Academy? Uh, my favorite part would be that we do team teaching. It, the kids travel together, so we really get to know them. They become a family. The kids are like brothers and sisters, and so they tend to bicker, and we end up being more like moms and dads, and really guiding them through their social experience and through their academic experience. Um, another great thing about the Success Academy is seeing this, those who choose to be successful. Um, we have the kids set goals in the beginning, and those kids who achieve those goals, for instance, we had 15 children who were inducted into the Junior National Honor Society in the last three years. Those are kids who came to the Success Academy um, with no GPA at all and were able to get above a 3.0 to be part of that National Honor Society. That is fantastic and great news. Is there anything else that you think that the community should know about the Success Academy? Um, I would say that a lot of times uh, programs like ours, they go, it's another alternative, it's another way to put the kids somewhere, but it's not at all. 
the Success Academy is an alternative program. It's an alternative to the regular classroom. It's a way that we can reach those kids who do not favor a regular size classroom, don't favor or adjust well in a regular school setting. So we give them just another way to learn. And I want to encourage people to support that. Hi, my name's August Page. And today we're here with, with Ms. Rusher. She's the PBS chair. And um, today we're gonna be talking about PBIS, or positive support, positive behavior support. Um, so is, are there any things you can tell me about this initiative? Yes. Positive behavior support is a program we're doing here at Highland uh, to encourage students to make the right choice, not just once, but continually, to make it a habit to make the right choice. We do things like encourage the kids to make the right decision by saying, that was a great leader. I'm glad you walked down the hall on the right side. Thanks for not running. Good words. I'm glad you picked her pencil up for her. Those kinds of things. But what we're trying to do is replace the negatives that we are saying a lot of times. Stop, quit, don't, put that down, leave them alone. And with that being said, every time you hear something encouraging, it makes you want to make that choice again. The more you hear the positive encouragement, the more you're going to say, all right, I want to feel that. I want to make that decision. And I want her to recognize, and the other teachers, of course, but I want them to recognize that I'm making the right choice. And now, if they start to, get, if I get in trouble, then they are going to say, oh, man, now she's disappointed in me. And so what we're trying to do is just help the kids with the mindset of making a better decision. Okay, so how do you keep the teachers interested and motivated to want to reward these students and uh, go along with the initiative? Yeah, absolutely. What we're doing for the teachers are a few things. Um, we give each teacher, each bus driver, we give the cafeteria custodian, deans, counselors, Scott Bucks. You can get as many Scott Buck pads as you'd like. Teacher writes their name, writes the name of the student, gives it to the student. The teacher then can turn in the back pad for their own drawing. We get things like Applebee's gift certificate or uh, some chocolate from Goods. The students can use their Scott Bucks for things like the Scott Buck cart. They can save them up and buy items. They can also, if they don't want to save them up, uh, they can spend them right away. They can turn them in into the cafeteria, into the drawing boxes. Every fi Friday, we choose three names from each grade, 6th, 7th, and 8th. And what those students receive are hats, t-shirts, back sacks, bigger items. So while they're running a risk of not saving that Scott Buck, they're also getting a bigger prize if their name is chosen. A few other things that we do, uh, we use Scott Salutes. What these are are postcards that we send home to parents to say your student, your child was recognized as doing something positive in the environment of Highland. Three weeks ago, I wrote 17 Scott Salutes home to all students, not just from my classroom, students that were doing the right thing in the hallway. Two names came from students doing the right thing in the cafeteria. And again, this is what parents want to receive. They want to receive the positive. They don't want to receive the negative that you need to come to school and pick up the cell phone or you need your child's going to be in detention. So again, it encourages the holistic approach of positive behavior. Something else we do are we do Scott Awards. These Scott Awards are given uh, to, to teachers and to students as well as to classrooms as a whole. Just today, Mr. Stecker, our assistant principal, um, gave one of these awards to a sixth grade class for demonstrating responsibility, readiness, and uh, what respect looks like in the hallway. 30 sixth graders were walking down the hallway where the rest of the building was in class. You didn't hear a word from them. So if we encourage that and we recognize that they were making the right choice, they will continue to make the right choice. So th are there any other activities um, that the PBIS rewards the students with? There are many things we do outside of uh, Scott Bucks and Scott Salutes. Some of the things we do, we do a no referral dance. If you do not receive a referral during five, six week time periods, then you're able to go outside, uh, weather permitting of course, on the football field. We have a DJ and so then you get to spend the last hour of school time 
having some fun, hanging out with your friends. Again, rewarding the positive things. Other things we do, we do honor roll pizza parties. Uh, we do attendance parties, and so they again can get pizza or donuts. We give classes, popcorn parties on positive behavior. At I-Step time, we give away bicycles, and we give away game rockers, which are chairs that are used for gaming systems. So with all this, these other activities, how do you get the funding? It's a good question. We used to be able to sell suckers, uh, and we were receiving a phenomenal amount of money from the sucker sales. However, due to some changes in legislation, we are no long, longer allowed to sell those things to make money here. So where do we come up with the money to continue those initiatives? What we have to do now is we have to rely in-house on receiving the funding and the support. We have a couple dances that help support the money, where the funding comes from. A couple other things, if we have a Jean Friday, students pay a dollar, teachers pay two dollars. That money is split 50-50. 50% of it comes in-house to the PBS. 50% of it goes on out to a community organization. We've done things um, like Anderson Police Department to help purchase a new canine uh, with the other 50% and some other community involvement. Well, thank you. Um, again, this is Miss Rusher. For, she's the PBS chair, and I'm August Page signing off. Highland Middle School, a place of spirit, respect, and integrity, molding our children for the future. If you see any of these staff members or administration in our community, please thank them for their work. I'm Makaya Calloway. Thanks for watching.